Oh my God, this is gonna be a fun one, I can tell. Everybody's a little crazy today. I I'm sorry I don't have my guitar. I'm just not as cool as the rest of you, but you know, whatever it is. Welcome everybody. It's Marilyn Wilson here today, the president of RE Technology with some fun and crazy people. Uh, we've got Dan Stewart, he's the CEO of Happy Grasshopper, and uh, Randall Martin, who's the, uh, the chief cook and bottle washer at the Martin Group and the uh, part of CBNA in Houston. And Chris Dreyer, our secret mystery guest who just popped in about 30 seconds ago to join us. So it's kind of like we were at a concert once with uh, Ariana Grande and Justin Bieber walked in right halfway through. So you're just like our Justin Bieber, Chris. Thank you for being That's here. That's awesome. That is awesome. That is Ooh. fantastic. Bieber, no Bieber. We're going to forget wow. this moment. <laughs> All right. So we're mark. here to, to talk about some, some fun stuff. Um, we've got some people that are, you know, that are doing some really cool things with these tools. Great partnership in place between Happy Grasshopper and Revaluate, and um, I'm gonna just like let it rip. So Dan, like, why don't you take it away, and we'll, yeah, we'll start talking yeah, about we'll, how you got I mean, to where you got to. Go for it. First thing I want to do is say hi to everybody. Like this is so cool. We've got a uh, bunch. I see the numbers ticking up here. We have more and more people showing up, but go ahead and say hello in the chat. I want to keep this as interactive as possible. So say hi. Tell me where you're from. So I see we got uh, Patty there. Awesome, glad you're here. Deborah, Dick, Carolyn, Brian, Fred, Genevieve, George, Guillermo, Irene. This is so cool. We got Duluth, Georgia in the house. Akron, All right, Ohio. Akron. Patty. Chicago. Colorado. Chris Dreyer's from Golden, Colorado. Unbelievable. Nice. Uh, Wendy's in Minnesota. This is sweet. This is sweet. So everyone who's here, I mean, I imagine you're here for a reason, right? There's something you want to get out of this time that we're spending today. And the reason we've assembled this panel is to deliver that thing that you're looking for. So, uh, you know, whenever you're hosting a webinar, you have some choices you can make. We can make this a sales fest, like, ooh, who wants to hang out for that? Like, go ahead and say, yes, please sell to me nonstop for an hour if that's what you want in the chat. <laughs> Okay, I don't see anybody who's raising their hand for that. <laughs> Nobody wants that. Bo, you, you left your guitar at home. That's unacceptable. Okay. Go get it, man. Yeah, Go come in, it. Bo. You got to have your guitar. Sorry. Yeah. Please play one of your guitars for us. I mean, we want a little concert between the three. Oh, of we can do that. We can absolutely do that. We can do it. And yet, let's also, oh, my buddy John Mangus is here. That's so awesome. Hi, Megan. Give John a hug for me for sure. Um, so do you, you see what's happening here right now? Like if you read between the lines, uh, the reason we're all here is because we value the types of conversations we get to have with other people. Okay, I, like I have some fundamental beliefs I wanna share because um, you know, I, I'm gonna get like super real here if that's okay. Can we do that? Like, is no. that all right? No. Okay. Because again, I mean, I could just sell stuff for an hour if we wanna do that instead, but. I'd really rather just have a real conversation, if that's cool. Would that be all right? <laughs> Somebody's holding up a lighter. Maya's got a lighter. Go for it, Maya. <laughs> nice. Good to see you. Okay. All right. So here's the deal, guys. Um, all around us, there are people whose levels of performance are somewhere other than where they'd like them to be. Like that happens in life all the time. Um, you know, Randall, we were chatting earlier about your years in the restaurant business. So when my first child was born, I was a waiter and a bartender, and I was terrified that I wouldn't be able to su support my family. Oh. I didn't know how I was going to provide for them. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I look back and I think sometimes like that song, right? How did I get here? How did I end up in this beautiful life? Like, where did this all come from? Yeah. And I know for a fact it comes through the relationships that I've been able to build and enjoy along the way. Mm -hmm. So, you know, Chris Dreyer. How long have we known each other? Man, more than a decade, fortunately. Uh, no, nope, that's not true. Okay. No, nope. it Less can't than a be decade. because we just turned 10 years old at Happy Grass. Oh, so, <laughs> like, it was probably we were around for about a year before we even started to get out, you know, on the scene and, and make friends with other people yeah. in the industry. Okay. So I would say RE Tech South down in uh, yep. Atlanta area was probably the first time when we connected at a conference. Yeah, that makes sense. That sounds right. 
So, you know, in all these years, we see each other periodically. And then, you know, at some point we go from just being like people who know each other and kind of like each other to, you know, we're, we're in each other's DMs and then we're like texting each other whenever we see something cool, right? So if you think about like all of the relationships we have, usually we're in the center and we got somebody like way out in the outer rings and we pull them closer and closer and closer over time. So that's been um, really the story that explains how I went from being a waiter to being uh, the CEO of a multi-million dollar company and having started six other companies along the way. Uh, it's not that I've got like this secret sauce or anything super special. It's just that I really care about people and I enjoy getting to know them and I want to continue to have relationships with them. So Randall, can I uh, ask you a couple questions? Absolutely. Absolutely. How many strings are on that super cool guitar? There are. <laughs> 12. There are 12. We were doing guitar stuff earlier and I'm like, oh man, I don't have a 12 string. I need to get another <laughs> peg for the wall behind me. Yeah. But, you know, when we were chatting, we talked about how much your business comes from relationships. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, go ahead and tell your story about where your business comes to you from. This is awesome stuff. I mean, it, it, it's all relationship based. I mean, this whole business, you're, you have to you're spending a lot of time with somebody, uh, their home journey. Sometimes even on the shorter side is a month or two. And uh, sometimes, you know, you got some people I can attribute that I spent three years with before we finally got something. So uh, if you don't have a healthy relationship, it just doesn't work. Um, it's more important than anything else. And so um, even before real estate, it, it, that's, that's what it was all about. So, but I, I just, I'm so much of a people person. And, and I think that, anytime you can, there, there is a wealth of sales. There's a wealth of relationships uh, within your existing circle. And just, uh, I think what we, social media in a way helped bridge some of that stuff, but in a lot of ways, it kind of makes us lazy. And if we're not utilizing and, and, and we don't go deep with people as much as we used to maybe. So uh, I think staying in front of them and keeping in touch is the name of the game. So, yeah, for sure. For sure. So, you know, a big part of what you're talking about is how when you build a relationship with someone as a sales professional, your agenda initially has to be one of two things. Like it has to be to serve them, figure out what their need is, or some people make the mistake of putting, oh, I need to close this. Like I've got to sell, sell, sell. And one of the things I love about you is like, it never seems like you're even thinking about the sale. You're always focused on the relationship. I, I would rather... So I had a client that told me, uh, it was the first person that told me this, they, they were relocating for like the umpteenth time and they were coming to Houston and we were working with them and Vanessa and I were both out showing them homes and this and that. And um, they said that out of everywhere, out of every state they lived in, I was the first realtor that talked them out of buying a good house. And, um, and, I, and it was, you know, close to half a million dollar home but I didn't feel like it had good resale ability. I just, there was things that stuck out and I, I got to know them over the time that we were showing. And he said, Randall, we love this. What do you think about it? I'm like, well, I'm gonna tell you why I don't like this one. And, and actually they didn't buy that house. And so um, they bought something later. And, but if it was just about the sell, then I would have kept my mouth shut. And then I, I believe in laying your head on the pillow at night and, and feeling good about yourself and, and not having regrets. And uh, I think if you're honest with people and straightforward, that, that, it, that's going to lead to more sales than you could ever imagine. Absolutely. Yeah, that's, that's what the focus should be. So if it's cool, I'd like to give you guys just a little bit of perspective on who I am and why we're here and why we've got this group of people here. So, you know, 10 years ago, I sold my CRM company and I did like a pseudo retirement. I played golf and went sailing. And then after a short amount of time, I was like, I have got to do something. This uh, hang out and do nothing but have fun is not for me, right? So I wanted to solve the problems that I had at my previous company. So we had built a white label CRM product that franchises bought and provided to their franchisees, right? So 100% of the franchisors bought the system with the intent that the franchisee would use it. And the thing that really bothered me that kept me up at night was that of all our users all around the world, only 18% of them had ever logged into the system even once. 
Like that was really, really painful for me. So in real estate, do we have an uh, adoption, agent adoption problem with technology? Yes or no? Like <laughs> that's out there for sure. Oh, yeah. Brokerages bust their butts. They try to find the right technology suite. They try to bring it in house to really help the agent. And then most of the time the agent is like, oh, I'm busy. <laughs> I don't know. I'm not doing that. Yeah. I'm not doing that right now. Oh, yeah. So yeah, but you know, I and fairness, that pain fairness, point. Ben, um, brokers aren't always um, either prepared or focused on thinking about helping the agents understand why those tools benefit them or, or talking about it enough, right? There is, sometimes you get it, you say, you turn it on, you have one round of training, and then you just expect everybody to figure <laughs> out and, and continue to remember that one round of training. It, it, it doesn't happen like that. This is a, it's a process, not an event. Mm -hmm. um, so the smart brokerages these days, in my mind, are um, they're focused on retention and they're focused on recruiting, but they're mostly focused on delivering value to their customer, the agent, with tools like this that really help them be successful. Th those are the best brokerages out there. And then Randall, folks like Randall pick up the ball and say, I'm going to go run with it. And then they become superstars. And then there's Martin groupies everywhere. Right, Martin? Or Randall? <laughs> Yes, that's what's up. <laughs> you know, we're in a business of, of removing roadblocks. And uh, for our clients, that's what we do. We, we Every real estate transaction is going to have some type of roadblock that you're going to run into and being able to navigate around that. For brokers, it's no different. You know, you have agents, there's going to be roadblocks. And if the technology is too difficult, you've just now taken a roadblock and turned it into a wall. And if you can't break through that, then, then you're going to have a disconnect. And the, mm -hmm. you have enough of those disconnects, then you lose people. So Noreen has a great question that she just came in. She said, I'm a training specialist in my office. I can't even get my agents to show up for Zoom training. So Dan, I know you've been super successful with doing that. So I'd love to hear from you on what your suggestions is to excite people about technology. And then Randall, you know, why you do show up for Zoom meetings and how it helps you. Well, so if you want to attract an audience and actually have them show up and do things, you have to help them really understand the opportunity that's available for them. So, you know, in, in 10 years of helping agents find more transactions in their database, we know that there are typically as many as 12 transactions per year for every 100 people in your database that you have a true relationship with, right? So one of the ways you can get people to show up for a training is to help them see how by learning that and understanding what's available for them, they can actually access that part of their business. Now, this said, like one of the problems that's rampant in, in every business is there are some people who are really committed, they're really involved, they really want to be there, they, they intend to build something of substance. And then there are other people who are less committed, like they're not sure, right? They're not sure that real estate is even for them yet. So, you know, we found that if we're really going to create a meaningful change for our brokerage clients, we have to have a way to serve every segment of that agent population. If you're a brand new agent, you need a different set of helping hands than if you're a highly experienced agent who's running a team, right? It's different things. So, you know, usually when I'm running a training class for a brokerage, I'm going to start by understanding who the audience is. So I would want to know in this instance, they tell me about the population of your brokerage. What are they doing? What kind of transaction volume? What's the average transaction volume per agent? And then we can build a training session that's really going to help them where they are instead of maybe where they'd like to be a couple of years down the road. So yeah, those are my thoughts. How about you, Randall? Why do you come to these uh, training sessions? Um, I think that it's sort of like I, I have this vision of Batman. Okay, he has this belt, this belt, tool belt. And the thing is, he never has to think about the tool that he's gonna pull out. So, you know, you're falling off of a building, you got your grappling hook, you know, or you, you need to flow, you do this. And if you have to think about your tools, you're probably not gonna use them very well, very, very efficiently. So, in, 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 you know, there's the old adage, as you can say, if you're not earning, you should be learning and all that kind of stuff. But realistically, if you're gonna use something, I don't think you want to look like a fool in front of your clients, in front of your friends. So you, it takes, it makes sense to take the time to learn how to use it. So that's why I think agents won't adopt things that are difficult because they don't want to take that time to mm. learn. So, but, um, but I, I think it's important to, for not only for yourself, but for the sake of your, of your clients and your relationships to understand the tools that you're using. 
your clients should not understand it better than you do if you're the if you're the expert, right? Maya what, I makes a great comment. She said, once you get a single agent who will use it and succeed, which is you, Randall, in your office, right? Then the others who are engaged in the office will jump on. When they see the results, they want them for themselves. She says, what I like about Chirp and Happy Grasshopper is the results are immediate. They can see the responses, so it makes proving the value easier. You were telling us a little bit about that earlier. When you send out a, a, a Chirp and a Happy uh, from Happy Grasshopper, what happens? Tell us about that, because it's really interesting. Um, so when, when you, when you we, we like wins, right? And I say we, I'm talking about people, we, we love wins. We get, it, it, you know, it, it's, it's like an endorphin rush. And um, so when you get a hot sheet, uh, when you get an email that says, hey, this person opened your happy grasshopper. Oh, and they clicked on the link that was inside of it. That's like a, a, an endorphin rush. And so, uh, um, and, and if we celebrate the little wins, all the little wins lead up to bigger wins. So uh, having good measurements, good data, good metrics, I think it's huge. So when you, when you have a product and you don't know if it's working, you kind of start burning out on that product. Um, you know, it, it, but if you, you, if you start using something and you start immediately seeing some benefits from it, then you kind of, you get a little more pumped up. The more pumped up you can get, the more, the more energetic you're going to be. And before you know it, you got guitars on your wall in your office and you're just, you know, playing on webinars with Dan and, and Dr. Dre over here. And, and uh, <laughs> So what but, happens, but, Randall, after you're done with your endorphin rush, what do you do next? Because it's not just about you, it's about the client, right? What do you do next? You, 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 you contact the client. You, you know, if, if someone is, sometimes people are hesitant to, to reach out. Um, they, so for instance, if I see that somebody has opened up one of my happy grasshopper emails, great. But if I get a second notification that they've opened up the email a second time, maybe two days in a row or twice in a week, something, I know, I know something's on their mind. And because I have that data, it'd be a shame if I didn't use it. So if I know they're reaching out to me, they're, they're thinking about something, it may not even be a sale. I, I don't care if it's a sale. They're thinking about me for some reason. And, right. and, and I can, it's, a, it's almost like a warm handoff. I can, I can make a reach out. Yeah, I don't have to say, hey, I'm, I'm snooping the fact that you've opened up some emails. But no, I just say, hey, John, how are you doing? Don't How's be it going creepy. over there, you know? <laughs> yeah, you're not creepy. You're, you're not telling them, hey, I saw you clicked on the article about that. Da, 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 da. You're just saying, hey, just thinking about you. I thought I'd call and see how things are going. The, this, the data is telling me that someone's looking for me. Now they, you know, of whatever. So. Yeah, that's solid. That's exactly how we train people to use the hot sheet. Because you don't want to call him, and, oh, Marilyn, I saw you click this link. That's not cool. Um, <laughs> that's, that's not even remotely close to cool, right? Yeah. So I want to shift the conversation here a little bit because, you know, as a serial entrepreneur, the thing that I'm always looking for is where's the pain and how can I make it go away? Like, that's the secret to being successful in anything. If you're in business, find the pain and help it go away for people. Yep. So if you're an agent, you know, think what's painful for you about your CRM. It's super complex. There's a bunch of content in it that's really dull, like eh, it doesn't really fit you. It doesn't get refreshed frequently. And uh, it can be complicated and just, oh my gosh, there's so much that you have to do for it to produce any sort of results for you. Now, if you're a broker, you have a different set of pain. You're asked to invest in technology that then agents don't use. Like, how do you get them to do that? You've got a constant need to replenish your agent population, right? People uh, churn out of this business. It happens. So if you're a broker and you want to build a long-term successful business, you have no choice but to constantly be recruiting and working on retaining the best quality agents who are a real tight cultural fit for your organization. So I thought, gosh, I have brokerage clients I work on with recruitment content. And I have agents I work on with content to help them get more referrals and generate new opportunities. How can we marry these two needs together? Like, how can I create one product that makes both of these pain points go away? And that's the genesis of Chirp. That's really where it comes from. So, you know, what we do is we provide our technology platform to the brokerage. We take our branding off it. So it's the broker's branding that goes on the technology product. And then we fill it with content that's appropriate for the agents to use. So rather than ask that brokerage to make an investment in technology that they don't know their agents will use, 
We simply ask for the opportunity to brand it appropriately for their brokerage and to train their agents on its use. And you know that's what we did with Chance Brown and Associates. That's you know where we we had our first initial beta rollout of this. It was a great success. We've since partnered with Lab Coat agents to roll it out. And along the way, we said, well, how can we make this even better? And we can do that uh, through collaborations with Revaluate. So, Chris, I'm so amazed by what you've built at Revaluate. I think it's really valuable, needed use of this data resource that's out there. And I love the fact that for every contact that's loaded into Chirp, we're running that through the uh, Revaluate algorithms so that we can tell our members, our, our clients like Randall, hey, this person's very likely to move. Like that is a Thank super you. cool thing to be able to do. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, Dan. I appreciate that. I, I think, you know, uh, prior in the conversation, we were talking about um, really what it boils down to is automation. Um, mm -hmm. If it's not automatic and it's not easy, if it's the opposite of that, if it takes physical work and it's difficult, that's that's very polarizing, right? Whether it's going to be used or not used. And so it has to be easy and automatic um, or it's not going to get used. I worked for a direct mail company 20 years ago and I would go into real estate agents offices and you would see the product that they had purchased from the direct mail company sitting under the desk, postcards in shrink wrap, mm. sitting under the desk, covered in a layer of dust. Because you're not in your head, Randall, you've seen this. <laughs> He's gonna grab them. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Right? So because perfect example, difficult, right? And takes a lot of work to get done to address them, to go through that process and do it. Thus, it's an investment that's not being leveraged uh, for the broker or the agent, and it's not bringing in uh, revenue for you because it literally, they sit under the desk. And that happens not just with you, but uh, unfortunately all the time. And I'm sure other people on the webinar have seen stuff like that. So yeah, I think systems and processes like, like Chirp that can be automatic uh, and then, you know, wrapping it in with Revaluate's um, ability to segment some of that information so that we can really closely identify those people that are most likely to move. That That is easy and automatic. So speaking of automatic and easy, Randall, you told us before the call, what percentage of your brain power does it take to learn and use Happy Grasshopper? This is a really important statistic. Very important statistic. Um, I feel that it uses about 2% of brain power to, to uh, click that you agree to an email to send out to your database. <laughs> and that's, yeah, one the, that's one of the best things about the product. You don't have to overthink it. You don't have to go to five webinars to learn how to use it. You know, go to one, see it. Once you see it, you, you see how easy it is. Um, it, there's really no excuse to not use it. Maya says the easy button. I want that. I'm sure every every agent on the call wants that. But brokers want that too. So Dan, why don't you show us a little bit about what this is? Because we're kind of talking around it. But what, yeah, sure. Let me show that you real quick. And then I would love you to tell that story, Randall, about um, how that one email kind of worked out really pretty pretty well for you. Absolutely. So are you guys seeing my screen now? Yeah, just go to full uh, full display. You're on. Uh, you're on the other yep, mode, yep, right? This is where I want to be because I'm going to jump around and show you a few different things. Okay. But, you know, like Chirp is super simple, guys. We don't need to have a 10 hour class on how to explain all this. The reason it works, the reason it's so effective is because we're crunching all the data in the background to figure out the ideal communication frequency and types of messages for agents for one specific audience. And that would be people who actually know who they are. So your past clients and your sphere of influence should always be your best source of new business. So the way we help you get at that is we create and deliver 17 non-salesy emails per year. That's really important. Uh, you love real estate. I love real estate. Not everybody always wants to talk about real estate all the time, right? So uh, the, the whole point is to start a conversation. That's what we want. And so we supplement those emails with text messaging, and also with voicemail drops. And there's six to 12 texts and voicemails per year. I'll give you the breakdown of those. 
Uh, one of them should be their birthday. Another one should be their transaction anniversary. Uh, and then we'll have four quarterly messages, which I call lead harvesting messages. And then you wanna supplement those with six holidays that you choose. So, you know, I have clients I love to send Thanksgiving messaging about. I love to send Halloween messaging. I love to send Christmas messaging, you know, but, but you have to send the messages that are comfortable for you. So we know that that frequency is important. That's what's gonna yield the best results for our members over the course of the year. So uh, that's the framework, right? We call that our fast track framework. And when a member is getting set up with us, all they really need to do is load the contacts into the database, which is super simple. Uh, it's easy to load those in. And then we reach out to you and we say, hey, Randall, it's time to send a new message. Like click here to choose one of the messages that are available, uh, which all of our messages are editable, by the way. Do you edit the messages we write for you or do you just let them fly? I'm about 50, 50, 50, 60, 40. Sometimes I edit them only because I like to add a little line to the end or something of that nature. I, I you know, okay. lots of times I just click and go. But Dan, did I understand you correctly that so no one has to remember that it's Tuesday and I got to go make sure I send my email blast. You basically say, hello, time to do yeah. this. Is that right? <laughs> yep, that's right. That's awesome. And it, it all gets loaded here. Like I'm logged into the dashboard. So we can pop up tasks, you know, that need to happen for you. You can see who's most engaged. And then like here, we've got Chris's reevaluate score pulled in. So we can see those people who are most likely to move. And uh, you see by the names here, this is obviously a demo account. Uh, Bruce Banner and Tony Stark are awesome, but they're not real people. Mm -hmm. So uh, like here we see upcoming birthdays and upcoming transaction anniversaries. You make it super simple just to send them a text. Like there's your birthday text ready to go for those people. Boom, you can edit it if you choose, you can just send it out. Um, so when a, a new member starts with us, we walk them through the process where they record some voicemail drops, they approve some text messaging, they load their contacts, set up their email signature. And from that point on, like we're walking side by side, making sure these messages are going out when they're supposed to. But how long does that setup take down? It doesn't sound like it's that complicated. Or actually, it's, I should ask yeah, you, Brad, was it, it too, too long? Was it like reasonable amount of time to get it set up? Uh, I would say, you know, every agent is going to be a little bit different in their their tech fluency. Mm -hmm. um, if someone is really struggling with tech, maybe this is a 20 minute to 30 minute project to get it set up. Okay. Uh, and of course, we have a full support team. So if they're stuck, they can just ask for help and, and we can help them. Um, you know, there's nothing here that's complicated. Like I'll show you the tour when uh, you first start. It's like five minutes to get connected. That's about what it should take. There's stick, uh, six steps that you need to walk through. So it's just as easy as following these prompts through the system and it's gonna guide you right through until you're done. So it really doesn't take much time at all. Perfect. Okay. So would it be cool if I gave you guys a quick tour of how this fits together, how it all works. Yeah, let's 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 show everybody what it looks like. It's pretty cool. Okay. So I started here on the dashboard, which is kind of a hub that tells you what's going on and you know highlights some things that are important for you to be able to do. Um, you know, a lot of people will get that notification, like we talked about with Randall, where they'll come here and they'll choose a message. Okay. Now you'll see, like I'll just pick one of these at random. And, you know, I can read this message and maybe I love it. So I'll rate it highly. Maybe I don't like it at all. So I'll give it a poor rating. And that lets our system understand what our members want more of. So our writing team can create more content that's in line with what you're looking for. Now, all of the messages that we send from our system, we measure the data across our entire membership. So hundreds and hundreds of millions of messages per year are measured. So we have a really good sense of what works and what doesn't work. And sometimes uh, you'll see messaging here that you might like shake your head at, like, I don't know if I could ever send that message. And yet, you know, when you do, sometimes you get the most amazing results. Like, Randall, would it be okay if I showed people the uh, Blockbuster message that you sent? Absolutely. Yeah, that's the one that I was smiling about because um, I, was, yeah. I just thought of that one. Because that one was, 
that one was um it, it's not it wasn't so wasn't so me like there's no way I would have found that I would have but when I saw it I was like you know what this is kind of neat I, I'm gonna I'm gonna just I'm gonna trust the system and send it and my my advice and I learned this from a client named Bob Herzog um, he said Dan I always pick the message that makes me smile the most because I figure if I like it my my people who like me will like it I'm like mm -hmm. genius goal <laughs> that's perfect Good. so uh, this message is about Blockbuster Video. It's Blockbuster finally pivots. It reads, did you see this? Blockbuster's last door is now an Airbnb rental. Ha! And this is a link to the article about it being an this. Airbnb rental. Uh, so set crazy. it up with 90s furniture, TV, VCR, and all the movies you can watch for four bucks per night. And call me crazy, but I actually love this. Kind of makes me wish they'd paid more attention to Netflix and pivoted sooner. Uh, speaking of real estate changes, do you know anyone who's thinking of moving or even someone we could convince to move if they got enough money for their home? Like, so that's the whole message, guys. And it's not about real estate. It demonstrates that the sender cares enough to keep in touch with you without having a sales agenda. So important to be able to do that. So I'd like to ask uh, the attendees, uh, if you would send that message, give me a yes. If you would not send that message, give me a no. Go ahead and put that in the chat for us. See these coming in. Lots of yeses. <laughs> Lots of yeses. Good. That's what we should see. So, Randall, this what happened when you sent this message? It's, it's kitschy. It's clever. It's probably something most people didn't read about. It's it's just it, 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 it in some subtle way it actually suggests you're really paying attention to the real estate market, right? Even though it's not really real estate, it's it's got a lot going on for it. I see Patty is saying maybe she wouldn't use the word convince. That's exactly convince. why we make wow. all these messages editable. Go ahead and change it. Totally fine. Yeah. Make it your own. We want you to be able to do that. Now, um, Randall, tell us about what happened when you sent this message. So two, two things. First off, um, I, I appreciate the messages. And, and when you showed that text message for the happy birthday earlier, one thing that's, that's brilliant is these emails that are written, they don't just end. They're not just an email. They usually end in a question or something that prompts a response. And that's, and that's something that I love because you, know, you can tell someone happy birthday, hope you have a great day, but you ended that with, do you have any plans? You know, things like that. So it just, it, it elicits a response, but this email, I sent it out and um, this one got a really large open rate of uh, 53% of, of, of the people who received it, opened it within one day, uh, right the same day. I'm sorry. But um Long story short, I, I got two direct reply back, replies from people that I had previously sold homes to. One of them was four or five years prior, and one of them was three years prior. Hadn't, you know, hadn't really directly communicated with these people, but both of them, I had no idea that moving was on their radar at all. Both of them said, one of them asked what that what they could get for their home because they're thinking about moving outside of the loop. The other person said, we've been thinking about getting a larger home within the same neighborhood. Well, if I add both of those together, um, it we equates to about $2 million in sales, uh, if, if, you know, both. So, and, and yes, I've ran CMAs and got that going and we're in the process of talking, so of that. Solid, awesome, solid, yeah. awesome. I love that. So a couple of things I want to point out. Um, Noreen has a great question here. She says, would you only send this to your past clients, current clients and sphere? We have Ylopo follow-up boss with leads coming in every day. Would you send these to those leads? So this is a great question because one of the most valuable things we can teach you today is that there's really just two kinds of people in the world. They know us or they don't. So your past clients and sphere already know who you are. To them, it's weird if you're only sending markup updates and price change alerts and new listing alerts. They're like, why, why are you always sending me this? We're, we're friends, stop sending me so much market stuff. And of course, if I'm a brand new lead that's just come from an IDX site or some other source, I don't know you yet. You're just one of a zillion people who might open a door for me and let me buy real estate and cost me too much in commission, right? People have all these sorts of crazy ideas about the value an agent actually provides. So, you know, for those leads, what you need to do is send a campaign that helps them see you as unique and special. You need to send content that helps them understand why they should work with you specifically instead of all the other people they could work with. 
So uh, we can help you with that at Happy Grasshopper. I have a staff of copywriters. We'll interview you. We'll create that content. Uh, we actually have a deep integration with Follow Up Boss, so we'll catch those leads the moment they arrive, and then we can automatically deliver that conversion campaign for you. Um, so that's what you do with people who don't know you. For people who do know you, you need to have regularly scheduled conversation starting messages like the one we just talked about with Blockbuster. So um, Randall, I, I love that you are not only a great guitar player with great artwork on your wall, but you also really measure your business much more quantitatively than I think lots of agents do. And so when you, could you look at the numbers, what are you seeing? Is a, is a tool like this actually helping you increase your business, the repeat business that you're getting and the referral business that you're getting? Maybe share some of those numbers with us because they're kind of amazing, actually. Absolutely. So um, for people who may or may not know, uh, this going in my 14th year of selling. So, um, and I, I did pull stats from 2019 and then this year. In 2019, I ran 83.4% by past client and referral. Referrals That's from really past. high. That's so, isn't that high, yeah. Chris? That's really high. Yeah, 80, 83.4. Um, so far this year, we're 73.5%. But I think uh, as we close out the year, it's going to come to really close to 80% again. And, and and we've always been around 82% past client referral. So one thing that I'll point out uh, that's super super interesting. Um, most of the time, people we engage with uh, it starts by email. That translates to a phone call. But what I've found is that every time someone reaches out to me in response to, or anything, you know, hey, Randall, do you have a moment for a call? I wanna chat to you about refinance or chat about this, whatever. I always scroll down and I look and it's a happy grasshopper email that they're replying to. So as these emails are going out 17 times a year, I don't get a response from all 196 people that I send it out to every month or whatever, or every, you know, every three weeks, but, it's that that's where they're finding me. So it tells me that, hey, that what they're thinking of my name, they're going into their email or, or and then they're, that's where they're seeing. That's how I'm staying top of mind. Um, and the, what I love about it is it's, I'm sorry, I'm just not a great person at picking up the phone and calling all of my database every month. I, I suck at it. Um, I, I, that's not, I'm not great at that. But, um, but this takes that pain point away from me as an agent. Well, and, uh, uh, and when you start eliminating my pain points, we're going to work real well together. And it, just do those numbers again. How many people do you send this to? And how many, how many transactions did you do last year? So um, in 2019, we did 54 uh, transactions. Um, the, I, I believe in the cream of the crop goes in my happy grass or my shirt program. So um, I, I, the way I kind of describe it is uh, if you're in my, my happy, my chirp, happy grasshopper, it's because I want to talk to you. If I, you know, I, we, you're not just a, you know, you know, come on, let's be real agents and brokers. We, sometimes you close a deal and you don't ever want to speak to that person again. You know, it right. was, it, maybe it was rough. Uh, maybe something happened and you just said, you know what, we got the deal done, got them what they needed, but that's just not someone that I felt good in my heart with. Uh, and, and that happens sometimes. They're not going to go in my happy grasshopper. So, um, so not everyone in my database is going in, but uh, but it's also going to be more than just my top 50. So I, I arrive around 100, 200 people. I, actually, I just cleaned it up. Uh, it's 196 people at the moment are getting my emails. But every. round numbers, you did for, there's 200 people, rough numbers in your database mm -hmm. of your, your favorites, people mm -hmm. you want to do business with. Yeah, good. did 54 deals. So basically one in four, I know I'm sure they weren't all from Happy Grasshopper, but some significant percentage of, I guess my point is, we all know it's a lot easier to go back to the same client than it is to nurture a new one. It's a lot less expensive. It's a lot easier, frankly, for you. It's more fun, right? Because you know it's the right people. Yeah. So you're not talking to thousands of people. You're talking of the cream of the crop, the people you really like, and it's working. You're getting yeah. significant business. 54 deals, I mean, that's that's a nice business. Yeah, and, and it's not always uh John that that he opened my email and he he replied back to me and I just listed his house no sometimes John opens my email and then it's John's co-worker and, and he opened my email because he wanted to make sure he got my good contact information to give to his co-worker that's you know and and that's where it's coming around and that's you know that's that's how that's how it works and um, is, is that because of the quality of the relationship that you have with those people that they're willing to refer it or is, is it is there something else to it there 
as, as far as, I mean, it's, it's relational. Like Dan was talking about when we first started, I mean, it, it's about relationships and keeping in contact, but I, I know that I, where I fail is I, I'm not good at calling you throughout the year to check in on you, but this, this does it for me and, and it takes that point away. So, but then, but yeah, if, if, if I didn't, I guess what I, I'm trying to think of how, what I'm trying to say here is if, I guess if I was a crappy agent, they probably wouldn't um, want to, refer. <laughs> but I mean, but then again, uh, let's just be honest. Uh, what did you say, Dan? You can't polish. Uh, what were you yeah. Saying? I, I mean, that, that is the absolute truth, right? So if Randall was not the kind of guy people wanted to do business with, if he was not worthy of being referred by his past clients, mm -hmm. there's not a lot I could do to help him. Like mm -hmm. you got to help yourself first. Yeah. You know, there's so many agents in this business who aren't quite at the level where they're really ready to like take off and soar because they're dabbling. Mm -hmm. Like they haven't jumped in with both feet and said, you know what? I'm going to actually be that true fiduciary. I'm going to put every single client's needs ahead of my own. Yeah. And you know, that's why I'm such a huge believer in relationships because I know firsthand it's relationships that have allowed me to build the life I get to live. Um, I'm grateful for that. Another thing is, um, you know, a pain point for me when I got started using this years and years and years ago was uh, sending out messages that wouldn't always be the type of contact that content that I would have written myself and uh, entrusting the system. Because mm -hmm. what, when I go through my, my, my database and the people that I have in my Happy Grasshopper system, I have engineers, I have type A personalities, type C's, D's, I have all these different personality types. So if I'm sending 17 messages a, a year, uh, I, the type of messages that I'm sending are kind of gonna do this circular thing. So different people are gonna reply, are gonna, it, it's gonna connect with different, different personality types. But you know, case in point, Dan, yesterday I got my email that told me to send my message out. And, um, and you showed it on the screen a little bit ago, I sent the fall one because we did finally drop a few degrees here in Houston. I uh, got a little cooler, so I sent my fall message out, and um, I got a 21% uh, open rate, but guys, I got the email that morning. I woke up, and it said, hey, it's time to send your thing. At 8, 16 a.m., the email went out. It took like three clicks. I didn't change a thing in that message. And so That's the magic, right? That is the serious magic right there, because we all know we're supposed to do this stuff, yeah. but what happens? You get really busy, and then you've got five deals running, and you know, or something happens in your family. You got to take your kids to school, whatever. We get distracted, and to have that built-in discipline that you don't have to have, the system does it for you, to me, that's the magic. Because then one yeah. button and it's done. I don't have to think about it. And like you say, you yeah. don't even have to edit it if you don't want to. You can, but you it, don't have to. You just push it, and away it goes. It's awesome. It's, it's perfect. And our brokerage has built a bridge to make it easy. You know, by, by having this system in place, sends the email automatically to me. I don't, I don't, that bridge now has been built. All I have to do is step on it. And it's very simple step to take. I don't have to build the bridge. That's where you people, they, if they have to build it, they're going to start building it. And as soon as they run into a, a, an issue, they're just going to go find something easier. So Dan, right. back to, to that point about the, the brokerage building the bridge for you. I love that. It's a great analogy. Can you talk or, or talk or maybe show us, I know we looked a little bit earlier at some stuff about how the, the brokerage brand can stay in front of this process. Because somebody said, mentioned earlier, you know, if brokerage doesn't continue to reinforce this, and, and frankly, even if the brokerage does continue, if they people forget that the brokerage is, you know, sponsoring this or bringing it into the the into their agents for their agents it's yeah, it's hard so, for the brokerage to sort of you know stay part of the process so it just shows how does that work there there's something that randall said that's a perfect illustration of that like he's staying visible in front of these people who know him right, right. so every managing broker well, the agents know who these people are but sometimes you're not always visible in front of them as a managing broker people are working remotely you might not see everybody all the time and so we decided to structure this in a way that they're seeing uh, their broker all the time as the agent who's using the service. So we take our portal, which I showed you previously, and our branding comes off. So we take our branding away and we put it in the branding of our client members, right? So here's, uh, here's yours, uh, CBNA, right? Mm -hmm. um, so 
you know, again, the agents come in and they choose from the messages that are available, but those notifications that it's time to send a message, it comes from the sponsoring brokerage rather than from Happy Grasshopper, right? So that's another opportunity for them to get uh, some, some more recognition in front of their agent membership. So um, Patty's asking, does the broker have to sponsor this or can an individual agent choose to use this on their own? Yeah, absolutely. We have about 10,000 individual agents using this on their own. Okay. And I'd love it for you to become one of them. Um, you can just go to happygrasshopper.com slash chirp to see what that's all about. That's a page we set up where we'll direct the agents in one direction so they can just get started. And then uh, the other option on that page, if you're a managing broker, would be to schedule a call with us so we can talk with you about the process we go through to put this branding in place and what the training program looks like and how quickly we can get it scheduled for you. Perfect. So it, you can go either way. If a brokerage wants to, they can, but they don't have to. Absolutely. Noreen says, checked it out. It looks like a no-brainer. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of with you on that, Noreen. I wish I was selling real estate. I, the stuff I do doesn't have a, a happy grass heifer-like solution. It's awesome. Well, I, you know, that's the beauty of simplicity, right? When you, you, you think about how complex simplicity actually is. Mm -hmm. you know, we've worked really hard over a decade to make something that can be this easy to use. You know, Chris and I, two veteran real estate technologists, building things, constantly honing it, constantly figuring out a way to provide more and more value is how these things happen. And, you know, I, I know for sure that as polished as this is and as ready to produce results for you as it is, it's not as good today as it will be tomorrow. Like that's our commitment. We always want to improve. We always want to find ways to make it better. One, so. one of the things that I love that you do, Dan, is this, I, we call it surround sound marketing. Right. So if I, if I don't catch you on a text and you don't read the email, but maybe I'll get you on the phone. And, and even if it better yet, if I hear you in all of those places, right, it's like, wow, these guys really paying attention to me. Randall really cares about me. At the end of the day, I think that's the message that gets delivered, right? Mm -hmm. They're paying attention. They, they want to understand what's going on in my life. Now to switch topics for a second, Patty's asking Chris, if our, our Justin Bieber uh, surprise guest appearance person. Dr. Dreyer, Justin Bieber. <laughs> Dr. Dreyer's here. <laughs> Can you tell us more about Revaluate and, and then maybe how it connects, how the dots connect between the two groups, two companies? Oh, thanks for asking. Yeah, I'd be happy to. So um, the 30 second version of Revaluate is we take databases and we segment the database and identify those people in the database that are most likely to move in the next six months. Okay. <clears throat> right? So it's super simple. So then you take that idea and you plug it into Happy Grasshopper Chirp, and then we can see who in that uh, sphere of influence of the 250 people that you are reaching out to, who are the people that are most likely to move in the next six months? You can imagine if you had that knowledge, what you might be able to do with that power. Um, and the Revaluate service is incorporated inside your Happy Grasshopper uh, and Chirp account without you having to do anything at all. Perfect. So Randall, do you treat the, 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 um, the high potential client opportunities here? Do you treat them any differently? Do you, when you, when you look in, you say, Hey, there's someone that's coming in that might be ready to go soon. Do you do anything different with them? Um, well, it kind of goes back to the matrix when you have good data and it's, it's there at your disposal, you know, use, why wouldn't you use good data if you have it? If you see someone's trying to if you see someone's reading your messages or, or checking out, opening the emails, uh, or they have a score that says, hey, it's time to go, um, you know, you can look at that and just say, ah, oh, great. Why are you using a product if you're not going to use the, the, exactly. the, the tool? That's the tool. So also going back to something Dan said, making it sim simplicity, making it simple for the agents, for the broker, it's great. Let's not forget this system's making it easy for our clients to get back to us and reach out to us. That is the, that's the real, I mean, great. It's easy for us. It's easy for a broker, but, but you know, my clients, it's, they're not having to track me down. They're not having to, to go back and, and find, I'm not having to track them down. I mean, it, we're making that easy in this day and age. I, I, people might disagree with me on this, 
but I find most people want to either text me or email me to kind of see when, Hey, do you have a moment for a call or something like that versus just picking up the phone and going, you know, exactly. people are, especially now they're at home with their kids, they're busy, they're trying to homeschool this and that got a mask on or I don't have a mask on. I mean, it's, you know, all this different kind of stuff. So um, <laughs> having a quick email or a, a text back and them not having to go dig for it. That's, that's another thing. So. so this is a question for you, Dan, I think from Prez, um, Prez Props. I love your, I love your name in here. Does the email sent to clients look like my own email they would recognize or does it go out as anonymized email that may end up in some spam folders? Ah, uh, so this is a great question. Uh, spam, spam's a big issue, right? So, mm -hmm. you know, we looked at how we can best provide our service and now it's been almost 17 years I've been involved in delivering email as my profession. So uh, there's something called a send score. I want you to think of this as like a credit score. Uh, so myself as an email service provider, we have a send score that's recognized by all the ISPs, the internet service providers. Mm -hmm. Ours is averaged in the mid nineties for 10 years. So we have a sterling send reputation because we don't attract the kind of clients who wanna go spam people. So it's very unusual for our content to end up in the spam folder or the promotional folder. Now, uh, we do send on behalf of, but we have that Sterling send reputation, so you don't have to worry about that. Uh, there's lots and lots of ways to do this. Um, general rule of thumb, you don't wanna do anything that's also engaged by people who spam, right? So one of the things spammers do is they spoof people's email addresses. They make it look like it's coming from somewhere it's not. So sometimes by not saying, hey, I'm using a service to deliver this email, you're telling those people, oh, this message should definitely go to spam. So that's why we do it the way that we do. Awesome. Okay, good. So it, it's, it's being done the right way. Is there anything that you do that like when the first time somebody gets an email, like if Randall adds somebody new to his favorite list, it, do you, is there any way they can opt in officially or how does that work to make sure that they, that they, fit, they can keep getting what, what you're sending to them? Well, so general rule of thumb, if the new person being added is coming from a capture page, of course, there's going to be opt-in criteria on the page, right? The people that we're sending to via Chirp are always definitely known by the sender. So we're not putting them through any kind of hard opt-in. Gotcha. Uh, you know, the maximum number of contacts a person can have in their Chirp account is 250. So we don't have a scenario where somebody's going and buying a list on the internet and trying to spam a bunch of people. Uh, our business model doesn't attract that kind of abuser. So we're able to maintain that really sterling send reputation so your messages get delivered. So follow-up question from Susan. Are the emails and text messages sent from my existing email and cell phone number or ones assigned by Chirp? Yeah, we assign them to you and then everything forward. So. Uh, Let's talk about text here for a moment, because today we're kind of in the same like Wild West frontier email used to be in a decade or more ago. So there are companies out there who used to let you spoof your phone number to send an automated text message. And the FCC has been cracking down on that quite a bit. So rather than run into any sorts of troubles with that, we provide a new phone number for you. You actually okay. choose the number so you can find one you like. And then if anybody dials that number, if they just want to call you, it's going to ring through right to your regular phone number anyway. Perfect. So awesome. In 2020, we're used to everybody having more than one email address. It's getting to be the same way with phone numbers. Like people have multiple numbers. So Randall, you're, I'm, I don't want to, I don't want to make, uh, I, I think I'm becoming a Martin groupie on this call, I have to say, but <laughs> yes. Um, yes. What, what is your advice to the agents that, you know, there's agents on the call, I, I, I'm, I'm not going to ask everybody's production numbers, but I'm sure there's some that are not doing 54 yet that want to do 54 deals or more. What's your advice about how do you take it up a notch? How do you, how do you take your business to where you want to go? Uh, let people know that, that you're, that you're real. Um, and I, I lived by two words and I, and I still do, uh, immediate results. Um, uh, it, it's sort of like the do it now type mentality. Uh, you know, some, if someone's reaching out and needs you, why would you let that person wait for four or five hours before you go help them? You know, if your child was 
like having a struggle in a pool, you wouldn't just wait and just watch and say, I'll, I'll, I'll get you. I'm finishing my drink real quick. You know, <laughs> you're going to go in and, and handle that situation, right? Why on earth, when someone wants you, would you not have an immediate results mentality? And so uh, I, I, I just feel that lots of times we don't give people credit that's due. And when there's a lot of, there's A, B, and C people out there, right? And uh, there is just a, everybody wants the A leads, the, the, the right now, I'm ready to move now, but there is a wealth of fruit on that tree in B and C leads um, up there. And if you can stay engaged with your, with your database, you're not spending money on marketing. I don't mail out. I don't spend any money on mailing and farming. Um, I, I invest in the people who invested in me. They invested in me by letting me work with them and work up for them. So I invest in them by staying uh, in touch with them and staying easily accessible. So I, I, there's no, well, that I don't think there's a lot of, there's no, there's no secret sauce in this industry. There's no pill that you can take, red pill, blue pill, whatever. Nothing's going to like just make you amazing and increase your sales. And, and um, you know, but it, it, if you, it, it starts here. Let's just say that. Okay. It's in here. I, I would starts add here something too, don't you think? In your heart, you got to have the heart yeah. for it. Absolutely. For sure. Mindset and heart. I think if you learn to express sincere concern, mm-hmm. Like that's 90% of the battle. You know, so much of the, the time we train brand new sales professionals on scripts and they get so caught up in getting the words right in the script that the intention gets left behind. Mm-hmm. So if you just kind of hold in your heart that the intention is to really serve them and to express sincere concern for what they actually need, it's yeah. really hard to screw up. You know? Everybody's bleeding. Everyone on this planet has a bleed. If we can be the band-aid for that bleed, that cut, then we are valuable to that person. We will be relevant to that person. Uh, and, and as a broker, your agents are bleeding. And if you can be a band-aid and, and give them the tools that they need, you've got a bond. Um, our clients are bleeding. Uh, as realtors, if you've, I, I'm considering moving to another house in my neighbor, in my in my city, and I'm and I'm like, oh, this is painful. I don't want to list my house before I've found the house that I want to move to. That's what our clients are doing. They're bleeding. That's what they're feeling. Why? And if you can just look at things of servitude, how can I stop their bleeding? Mm-hmm. Then, um, and sometimes that's just talking to them, staying in touch with them. You know. So, anyways, gotcha. that's that's the name of the game, I think. All right, so Dan, where do we go from here? If, if someone's listening to this and saying, I want to be Randall, he's my hero. How do they well, do that? Uh, super straightforward, actually. All you really need to do is go to happygrasshopper.com slash chirp. I'll put that on the screen here for everybody. Okay. And we're going we're gonna to carry you from there, right? Okay. So you just choose the plan you want. We have two options for you. There's a monthly plan or there's an annual plan. Uh, the annual plan is the way to go because right now and right now only, we have this integration with Revaluate that we'll pass along to you at no charge. So for less than $2 per contact per year, you can have content that covers the whole year for your past clients and your sphere of influence. So, so that $2 for Randall, that what did that one of those emails that turned into $2 million? Is that right? So that's pretty good ROI, I'd say. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I, I, I've I've used Happy Grasshopper for a long time, and and I've tried uh, a lot of CRMs, systems. This this oh, for only this much money, you can do this and that. Uh, this is one that to me is a no brainer. Uh, I've never, I it just there's nothing easier, and it's so affordable. Awesome. It's nice to do stuff that actually works, isn't it? <laughs> it's huge because, you know, something I mentioned before uh, when we were talking is the moment one of my tools doesn't work, it, it goes out of my bag. Um, and I had a CRM that I had tried to use uh, that uh, like an all-inclusive and it was going to send out a message like Happy Grasshopper does. And it, and, I, and I looked and I noticed that um, it, it didn't send. I'm like, why didn't it send? Oh, because there was 18 steps that I had to take to get it set up properly and whatever. So um and gone it was out out of there so it's just things need to work <laughs> okay got two final final questions first question is um 
is there a place somewhere on the website where people can check and see which systems you integrate with? Because it sounds like you integrate with a lot of them. Yeah, we do. So uh, we literally have hundreds of integrations. So I'll, I'll name some of the big common ones. Uh, Command, Follow-up Boss, uh, Zapier, PySync, uh, LionDesk, uh, and just hundreds and hundreds and hundreds. Wise of, Agent, is that one of them? Wise Agent is one of them, absolutely. Perfect. Um, it's easier to answer the ones we don't integrate with than uh, the other way around. All right. um, and, you know, I would say that for Chirp, really, you don't even have integration concerns because these are your past clients in Sphere. These are people who know you. So it's not like we're catching new well, leads. Two or three that are of those guitars. Doing. What's that? Go for it. We need, to, we need to hear some guitar from one, two or three of those guitars we got <laughs> over there. <laughs> Like, yeah, we like we play can. us out, guys. All right, time to wrap it up with the guitar. <laughs> Are you ready, Randall? Are you ready? <laughs> what, so, what should we play? A little "Stairway to Heaven" on the twelve string, or what? You know, oh, you I go. actually <laughs> don't know it. I don't. I don't. I don't, I don't, know. I don't hear that. Yeah, there's a sign that says "No Stairway to Heaven" around here somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> So what should we play, guys? Uh, I'll let you know. Just a few notes. We don't have to. We don't have to have a concert here, but just a little bit. We need a little entertainment. Okay. All right. Um, uh, I'm gonna pretend. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Me too. Let's see if you guys know this one. Singing in the dead of night. Wow. To take his broken wings and learn to fly all your life. You were only waiting for this moment to rise. Blackbird fly. Blackbird fly. Into the light the dark black night awesome. all right guys there we go <laughs> how often you get that on a webinar not <laughs> often we deliver extra special stuff yay <laughs> happygrasser.com forward slash chirp go make it happen great job guys thanks, thanks everybody, everybody. Talk appreciate to you, you coming today okay thanks for having me